Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, your one-stop shop for mature dialogue. We're going to get right to it. Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I am your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my big uncle, Alan Tima. Before we go any further, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way you know when we upload new content. All right, y'all, we're getting right to it. Free agency season, Mm -hmm. all right? You seem excited. Oh, yeah. Texting me, hit me up Mm -hmm. every hour on hour. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers, man. Mm, what about them? <laughs> I don't want to hear all this. <laughs> they old, they old. Let they them have old. it. Go ahead. I really, I'm tired of this. That's you know, this nonsense. And they're old now, but then they'll be a super team by the time everything fall together. That's insecurity. We yeah. know how that go. I mean, these pickups, and they are old. They are, they are old. Okay. But it's so many of them that. No one is going to be overused. Yeah, because you can play players in 10-game spurts. You get right, what I'm saying? Right. So let's break it down. All right, so let's pick up, name the players that they they added. Obviously, we Carmelo. got the, Carmelo, Ariza. Ariza. Westbrook is there now. Kent Bazemore. Kent Bazemore. Dwight came back home. Wayne Ellington. Wayne Ellington is there. Malik Monk. Monk and Kendrick Nunn. Mm-hmm. All right. So as you stated, if you average it out, they may very well be the oldest team in the league. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. But also with that age comes experience. We're not asking them to play 48 minutes a game. Yeah. You'd be a fool to. Yeah. Most of those players are just trying to preserve their bodies to get to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And then you play the hard minutes. Veterans. Talk. Veterans are preserving their body. Them young boys, they running around, and it's probably still in the clubs and all that. These guys are veterans. That, that team chemistry is going to come together quick. Mm-hmm. The thing about having the veterans is that they know their role and they're coming to, to be the best role and play their role every night. Mm-hmm. And they're not trying to do much more of anything else. Um, then you, you take players like Ariza, who's a, a veteran, and he's all about playing the right way. Champion. You know, and when you bring that in, he's if, whether he's getting 20 minutes a night, 25 minutes a night, or 15 minutes a night, he's still going to be right there, head in the game, and prepared and ready to play. These are the type of players that that, that they have. Yeah. And when when we mention these players, we're talking about how old they are. This is the great thing about every last one of them. Talk your talk, man. The great thing about every last one of these old senior citizens that they're talking about, they still can create shots for themselves. <laughs> they are not just sit out, spot up Dinosaurs. shooters. I mean, and mind you, you got to look. All of them that they picked up, all those we just named, besides the white, they're all 40% three-point shooters. Wayne Ellington, Kendrick Nunn. But for some reason, now that they're on Atlanta, on on, 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 on Lakers, everyone is saying that they need shooting. No, they needed shooting from last year. I think they addressed that. If if you have these all of these guys that they just picked up, and and the majority of them is shooting 40% from the, from the field, for a whole season, all of them going to drop off to be low? low? No. But the, the issue with that is that most people who state that are casuals. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we always say, like, how it's important to watch the game. All right, if you can't watch the game, at least go look at the numbers or study those. No, right? that's the problem. A lot, that's but, all they're doing. Yeah, but, but if you watch a player like Wayne Ellington play. Then you would understand. You, the numbers speak for themselves, right? But if you he can create his own shot as well. He's not just a spot-up shooter. And that's the thing about it. This this is what when when it comes to a player like Wayne Ellington. Wayne Ellington shot, I think, I believe it was forty one percent from mm-hmm. the field. That's about right. La- from three point range last year. Playing for Detroit Pistons, where nobody's on the team is getting doubled. No double. And so he's creating a lot of those shots for himself, not just spotting up and he's knocking them down. He has to put the ball on the floor, and that's hard. When you find find players that can shoot high percentages from the three point line, and um and the, over half of those shots is coming from them sh- off the dribble, that's that's a one right there. Yeah, yeah. LeBron has never had these kind of shooters around him. He he has shooters around him, but not these kind. The kind that if he throws the ball out to them and it's eight seconds left on the shot clock, mm-hmm. 
and he throws it out to them or four seconds left on the shot clock and if they're covered they can still get open by putting the ball on the floor themselves so, you, that's a luxury right so lebron never played with anything like that mm-hmm. lebron ain't never played with anything like westbrook i wouldn't even mention him but you know you know what they'll say LeBron always has super teams, but we addressed that in our last episode. Yeah. That that term doesn't exist. But um, let's go down to uh, Kent Bazemore. All right, who took a pay cut, took a uh, the league minimum yeah. to come play with LeBron and Los Angeles Lakers. Mm-hmm. I love his hustle and his energy. Yep, and he knocks down the three point shot as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you've seen him play in his Atlanta days, Golden State, it was he was huge over there, and and, and um. With uh, with uh, Steph them last I mean, yeah. Warriors, and, and he was he, Golden State last yeah. year. Last year he was when huge. they heated up at the end of the year. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was huge. Was part of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's played we signed Taylor. Taylor, youth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Monk is twenty three years old. I was saving him for last. Twenty three. Yeah. Twenty three, but what he's able to do, he's athletic. Mm-hmm. He shot forty two percent from three point range. Yeah. Create for himself. He yep. can get to the basket. He, he, he can do, do all of that. Now, I mean, he's a bucket. To me, to get him on a minimum. Because he see, know the price going up after this. You understand? He's 23 years old, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of people can say, well, Mom, what, what has he done? This dude came in the league. He was like 19 years old. 18 to be exact. Yeah. But, Tucky. Yep. But he's been in the league for five years. Four or five years? That's fair. If he's 23 now and he's been in the league for five years, do the math, okay? He was a kid coming into the league. So anything, and listen, we've seen the last time a kid came into the league under the tutelage of LeBron James. I mean, of, of Michael Jordan. You saw mentally what that done. There's no stability over there in Charlotte. Now it's starting to become stable, but right. when he but came when in, he no. came in, it was nothing. No. So what what did you expect? There was no real veterans around him. You know? Mm. Now That's valid. He was what, a number of, He was what he was picked high over, teen like mid teens. He was picked over Donovan Mitchell. He was mid teens. Based on his play in Kentucky, yeah. he should have been. Right. He he was a buck. I believe that you're getting ready to start seeing yeah. seeing Am I calling him a star, a superstar? No. But um, you're going to see. Last year, in 20-something minutes, he averaged 16 points a game. Hmm. And shot 42% from three That's a huge pickup. But once again, the casuals are not going to understand that because they don't watch the games. Next pickup. Kendrick Nunn. That's a steal. That is a steal. He's a baller, man. Create his own shot. That's something you mentioned time and time again during this segment. He creates his own shot. He can knock down a perimeter shot. He can get to the rack. Make plays for others. That he can. Same thing with Monk. Monk does that same thing, too. Has toughness. Yes. His defense is not an Alex Caruso, but it's not. It's no slouch. But he's not an a offensive liability like Caruso either. Not at all. Yeah. No. And you can play him off the ball. This is yep. So he can play in the in the game with LeBron James um, running the offense. But he can play in the game with Westbrook running the offense, and he playing off the ball. I love it. Mm. Yeah. I, Palenka is a genius. He did his thing. Yeah. He, he made the best of what he had. And we still haven't mentioned Anthony Davis. If, and remember, you didn't, oh, go ahead. And I can only think like the competitor that I am. I know Anthony Davis must hear. He's fragile. Whoever his trainer was needed to be fired. He needed a new <laughs> trainer this this summer, and I believe that he's coming back and give us because with all this shooting that's around him, around the Lakers now, they don't need him to be a perimeter guy. A perimeter guy. They need him down in the post, and he got to play a lot more five. Yeah. Yes, because I can see you know when you got it. Players like uh, Carmelo, who can play the four, and you pretty much some small ball with Anthony Davis at the five. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I really do. Yeah, I like the pickups that the Lakers uh, made, man. And, and the biggest. Sometimes you gotta add by subtraction. Mm-hmm. 
like getting rid of obviously that was a no-brainer for me most people didn't like the fact that you know you let cools and heroin the, the same people that was killing cools last and, and year justifiably now all of a sudden kuzma should have kept them you gave him enough time and then you know well, well, he's playing with LeBron James. It's difficult to play with LeBron James. Okay, when LeBron James was gone, they had, he gave them nothing. 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 He was in the playoffs scoring two points, and they they and they Anthony Davis wasn't there. That's your position four. He was playing the four. Mm-hmm. Where were you? I mean, they gave him enough, uh, uh, ample enough time for you to show who you are, and if and if. That's too much pressure for you. Maybe you you need to go to a team that like a Washington and score a lot of points, but it's not winning basketball. Those are valid points. Okay. And the last thing I'm gonna add, because I mentioned sometimes you gotta add by subtracting. With the addition of Kendrick Nunn, you saved yourself seventy five million dollars right. because he's making ten, right? In two years. In two, that's what I mean. That's yeah. Five. yeah. I mean, in the sense of the total of the contract. Oh, yeah, right. Schroeder wanted eighty-five, mm. and he didn't. He's not going to bring what this kid's going to bring this year. Schroeder wanted eighty-five. Where did he get that at? Oh, he had it. He declined it. What did he get it at? At home, he had it. But he what, wanted one. But he, where did he get it at? <laughs> did he actually get it? Oh no, it's dried up now. He'd be lucky if he gets. How get much 2%. did he ask for? He wanted a, well over hundred. Well over hundred. The, the market is dried up right now, and he still haven't, haven't went anywhere, which works in— And he's un, unrestricted, right? He's unrestricted. So he, but the market is dried up. So hit, the market is dried up for him not to even get 85. The market is dried up for him not even to get a two-year, $20 million deal unless he's going to OKC, and I don't think that's the direction that they're going in, and— I believe the Spurs got cap space. Mm-hmm. But so the only way that he can get to a team where he's not getting a, the minimum is do a sign and trade, which walks right into three slots that the that the um the Lakers have open. Yeah. And all they can do is sign minimum contracts. But with a sign and trade Using Schroeder, that can might bring them back some quality or some assets. Or right? some assets. If, at this point, looking at this roster, mm-hmm. there's a couple of pieces that I, I would I would like to see uh, um, another center. Yeah, I can roll with that. I would like to see another center that um, actually can move. Marcus Saul. I don't really want to go into another season with with him. As knowing that he has to be a backup, just the simple fact that I'm thinking about the locker room. I think that he put a little tension in the locker room last year, going into the media talking about when he came. And that no, and then at the time, I mean, he wasn't giving the team a little bit of nothing. He eventually gave them a little bit down the line when they went back to him. But I'm thinking the locker room is real important, and um, it is. And if Gasol is looking to come in and play big minutes or start, and and if they decide to go another way, will you will you be that friction in the in the now with this leadership? Because they're old. <laughs> but <laughs> then that means <laughs> but then that mean mentally for him, he won't be all the way in and you gotta be all the way in the for a championship team all the way because they're gonna need they're gonna need his hit with him some nights. That, because where he goes works in that Denver when, yeah. when, when he's playing against a Denver, he plays Joker. He slows him down. He he, he can he can play and be I, I don't think that Dwight can. I think he's just too small for for um, Embiid. He can play Joker though. He, yeah, yeah oh, we seen that already. Yeah. We we seen that already. That's why we couldn't uh, uh, wait to get him back. We was upset with him last year and welcome back, Dwight. We're glad to have you. So yeah, I Everything mean, look good, man. I that's the one one slot. I just need they. I think they need to look into maybe a, a bigger power forward that can guard multiple positions. Or a center. Yeah, that'll come over time, though. Trade Be daylight. patient. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Take your time. You got the call. You mm-hmm. see how this works out. But yo, Rob Plinka, that man is phenomenal when it comes to his job, as far as yeah. making the best of what he has. Because yeah. that Schroeder, 
the fact that he didn't push the button so soon and rush mm -hmm. was the reason why he was able to do what he well, did. Well, no, shorter he did push the button because he offered them that extension last year and he turned it down. If he had taken that extension, these moves that we're watching right now couldn't have never happened. That's what I mean. But even what he offered, I thought it was too much, but that was market. So he, so, so Schroeder is a great GM for the Lakers. Thank Shout you. out to him, man. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. He's still not picked up. Yeah, and, and I don't wish that on anyone, but I, I just think. I don't feel sorry for him. What, he had an opportunity to, to get the money and show up in that first round, and he just he checked out. Can I come into a playoff game? The score, I believe, it was two points or none. Yeah, one of those the same And things. he played over 30-something minutes. I don't even think that happened in the history of the game of somebody that's asking for $100 million. Well, you said a mouthful. Anything else? Lakers in five. <laughs> All right, man. So y'all leave a comment below. Lakers Nation or anyone else who's tuning in, what do you think about the Lakers' recent pickups and additions to the squad? Do you believe they're top 14? And, uh... Anything else you want to add in the comment section, we're here for it. We will be engaging. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. Team Sports Entertainment, I'm your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my big uncle, Alan Tima. Y'all be good. We out of here. Peace.